If you were forced to play a psychopath's twisted revenge fantasy game, what would you do? Some family disputes require therapy, some require hugs, others require murder. This group of strangers all have one thing in common, which they'll find out in due time after they've been told they'll need to murder one of their compatriots if they hope to escape the game that they've all gathered to play. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the game maker in Death's Roulette. Seven strangers wake in a mysterious room in a cartoon villain's mansion overlooking the sea. They're bound at the wrists and ankles with rope. Simon cuts through his using the sharp edge of a statue, then moves around the room freeing the others, who were all disoriented. One, Jose, is bleeding while Teresa is shaking from drug withdrawal. She tells them that the last thing she remembers is preparing for a flight and then getting ambushed by someone with a chloroform rag. <laughs> Now, I've mentioned before that chloroform does not work like it does in the movies, so I'm not gonna harp on that here. I will say that any of us are vulnerable to an attack from behind, and escaping this is a matter of remaining calm and keeping track of your available limbs. Slam your elbow into her solar plexus, grab her thumb and twist, kick backward knocking your attacker off balance, then pound their head into the floor. If you're wearing heels, slam your heel down on their foot, and if you have any coordination whatsoever, pivot. Use their body as a ballast, walk your feet up to the wall and push. Another guy, Armando, says he was ambushed by two people in a hotel room. The family, Marta, Esteban, and their daughter, Lupe, say they were knocked out too, thinks this is a ransom situation. Jose tells them their captors don't want money because they've been torturing him for hours and never made any demands. With money off the table, Armando says there must be a connection that they share. Simon introduces himself, saying he's a police lieutenant from Mexico City. Esteban and Marta run an international conglomerate called Suma Group. Lupe's an environmental lawyer, Armando's a surgeon, Teresa's a flight attendant, and Jose recently retired. Before he can tell them what he did before, a nearby box flickers to life with a message saying that they're here to play a very simple game. There are three rules. One, you must choose one person in the group to die. Two, whoever's chosen must agree to die. Three, no one will be able to offer themselves to die. And finally, if no agreement can be reached, everyone dies. They have 60 minutes to decide. Well, this is easy to beat and also easy to lose. There's a cheat code already baked into the rules that would allow any nihilist in the group to end the game immediately to everyone else's demise. Rule number three says you can't offer yourself to die, which means the moment the rules are laid out, we could offer ourselves up thereby disqualifying us from consideration. It might take them a minute to realize what we're doing, at which point they'll probably all disqualify themselves, effectively nuking the game. But of course, then we all die. The other easy play here is very obvious to me, but there's a microscopic window of time to play it. Sorry, Jose, but you're the oldest person here. As such, make an obvious and immediate death candidate. Doubly so because he claims that they've been torturing him for hours, which either means he was part of a previous game since the game window only lasts an hour, or he's a plant, or attacking him is very personal and he's part of a larger game plan we don't understand yet. And I would want to ask him a ton of questions about what he's experienced so far. However, asking those questions will cost us time we don't have and we need to choose him immediately before he can remove himself from consideration. Instead, they begin to bicker. Lupe is not convinced that they'll let any of them live even if they play the game. Marta says they should wait, claiming her very influential friends will be searching for them. Teresa says none of the women should be considered, then suggests Simon should sacrifice himself for them as the cop of the group. Naturally, he doesn't like that idea. Then, wheezing from his corner, Jose removes himself from the game by offering himself to die. You see why I said we needed to choose him immediately? Everyone seems to forget rule number three, however. In favor of arguing about the morality of choosing him, Lupe refuses to pick him based on age, which almost everyone else sees the rationality in it. Jose tells him he's 70, lives alone, and has no family, which inspires Armando to reveal his wife is pregnant. Lupe accuses him of lying to protect himself. Armando moves the conversation to merit, saying they should vote based on who's most valuable. He says he saves an average 60 people per year as a surgeon. Marta counters that their company employs 80,000 people. Armando then goes on the personal attack, calling S 
pounced upon a coward for not volunteering himself to save his wife and daughter. This is why I would be terrible on a jury. And this group of idiots is why eyewitness testimony should not be enough to convict anyone of anything. The game maker literally told them the rules not two minutes ago, and not a single one of them listened. Jose again offers himself, and everyone but Simon and Lupe agree. They all take turns thanking him for his sacrifice. Then, he starts trying to convince the last two holdouts that his death is for the best, right up until a henchman opens the door and blows his brains out. Over the comms, the game maker tells them that Jose violated rule three, then restates the rules for them. Get going. Heads, the rules are really a set of ordered cascading instructions. Rule one must happen before rule two, before rule three. Do them out of order and you die. Esteban offers millions of dollars in exchange for the lives of his family, but no one responds. And the far door suddenly opens, leading them into a hallway decorated with circus iconography. They arrive in a room full of chess boards and other games. Armando spots the sealed envelope that commands them to read it. The card says they have to play a game in order to continue. Cards have been arranged containing their various personal secrets, but if they don't reveal the answers, they'll all die. Or you could just make your choice already. Questions are answered relatively quickly here. Esteban and Marta have a secret co-owner for their company. Teresa's addicted to amphetamines. Lupe falsified her bachelor's degree. Simon betrayed his partner, Lorenzo. Marta has a secret sister named Ophelia. Teresa's dealer is named Elf. Armando has gonorrhea, and Esteban is having an affair with a woman named Alejandra. Because Jose's dead, they have to guess his answer. But ultimately, the puzzle spells out the name Pablo Vega. Simon reveals he killed Vega's wife accidentally while trying to capture him. Armando operated on Vega's mother after a car accident, but couldn't save her. Teresa's revealed to be the hit and run driver who left Vega's mom for dead, but she says she didn't kill Vega's mom. She went to the hospital later and was told Vega's mom only had fractures in her legs and would make it. A puppet nearby suddenly begins to play recorded nurse testimony where we learn Armando intubated Vega's mom incorrectly and is actually responsible for her death. Talk about an escalation. Go in for broken legs and die from a breathing tube in the wrong place. Esteban points out that this debate about who deserves to die really comes down to Simon, Teresa, and Armando, because his family is not going to choose each other, which is correct and almost inescapable in regards to the rules, since whoever's chosen by the rest has to agree to die. But that doesn't stop Simon, Teresa, and Armando from trying to tear the family apart. We learned Vega's mom worked for the family as a housekeeper until she got pregnant and left the job. They accused Esteban of being the father, which he denies. With that, the next door opens, leading them to a room torn straight out of Disney's haunted mansion. The game maker tells them to seek the truth in the details, and they begin exploring. More truths come out. Teresa lost custody of her son due to her addiction, and a picture reveals that Esteban and Marta are Pablo's uncle and aunt. Marta admits that her sister Ophelia routinely attempted to self-harm and was committed to an insane asylum where she was brutally assaulted and died, giving giving birth to Pablo. Esteban and Marta abandoned the baby to be adopted by the asylum's midwife. In the fallout of this story, Armando, Simon, and Teresa form an alliance, saying they will refuse to agree to die, which means everyone will lose the game, which means Esteban and Marta will have to watch their daughter die too if one of them isn't willing to be picked. Diabolical. Marta turns the tide by offering Teresa a million dollars for her son if she's willing to die. Simon points out that there is no way to make them fulfill the deal if she dies. It's a tempting offer, but she refuses, saying she would rather her kid struggle than turn into an entitled piece of sh like them. Esteban shoots Simon a little look, and Simon triggers a vote for him, but Marta won't allow it, so the vote changes to Marta, and Marta forces her family to agree, and she agrees to die. The clock stops with a little less than 11 minutes left, and another door opens, leading them through the twisty house to a dining hall, where a banquet is set for them. Teresa finds pills waiting for her at the spot, but she refuses to take them, and they tuck in thinking that if they're gonna die, they should at least die on a full stomach. They also discuss what part Jose must have played in Pablo's family drama, and hypothesize that he was tortured because he assaulted Ophelia and was Pablo's biological father. Simon reaches for an apple and cuts himself on the blade tied with the message, do it yourself. The clock starts again, and Armando goes after Marta, forcing a fight with Esteban. This is an unskilled, minimalist fight, which is probably pretty realistic. Controlling the knife hand is the 
smart move here, but remember your other appendages. If your hands are busy, kick them in the groin. Afterward, Simon tries to help Armando as he bleeds out, but what he should really be doing is holding a vote so they can satisfy the game's rules with Armando's death. Dude's already dying and there's nothing in the rules that says they can't already be wounded. Teresa is the first to think of it. She starts the vote, they all go for it, and Armando reluctantly agrees to die. He makes Esteban grab the knife and finish what he started. <laughs> The clock continues its countdown until one second remains, and then the next door opens. Simon pulls the knife out of Armando's chest, and they wind through the house to an exit, leading outside to a hedge maze, where they almost immediately split up for no reason. Lupe gets scared that they're walking into a trap, so they double back, where two armed henchmen are waiting with shotguns. At the sound of the first gunshot, Teresa splits from Pablo and finds one of the several higher platforms scattered around the maze. She surveys the maze for the nearest exit, and is saved from discovery when she drops the drug she's carrying and dips out of sight just in time. Nearby, the family hides around the bend in the maze as the male henchman continues on, and Lupe tears through one of the bushes to form a more direct path to the next maze corridor. This is the way out of the maze. Use Esteban as a step stool, have one of the women look over the hedges, orient us toward the closest end of the maze, and cut through. Teresa lucks into finding a maze exit, just in time to unlock into getting hit by a truck. Her killer steps out. It's Simon, who reveals himself to be Pablo. Wow, who saw that coming? Everyone! The family makes it to the beach, where they discover a boat just hanging out there. Do you think rich people are born knowing how to hotwire yachts, or is that a learned skill? They swim aboard just as Pablo calls out, telling them to wait. Lupe stops her father from sailing off without him. They pull him aboard, and he pulls guns on them. He forces Esteban and Marta into a game of Russian roulette, threatening to kill Lupe if they won't play. Marta raises the gun to Esteban's head, but can't fire, until Pablo exposes one more super dark secret. Esteban has been assaulting Lupe for years. Lupe doesn't deny it. Marta raises the gun, but she still can't fire. So Pablo hands Esteban the gun, and Esteban has no problem pulling the trigger on Marta. And with that, we reach the final twist. Lupe was in on it from the beginning. She signals to the henchmen that they've got it from here. She confronts her parents, but when she isn't able to pull the trigger, Pablo does it for her. And in the end, they subject Marta to the same treatment Ophelia experienced at the asylum. <laughs> Aw, isn't that poetic? They all died in the same ways they screwed up Pablo's life. Surviving Russian roulette like this is an interesting one, but Pablo is distracted here long enough that we might get away with it. Might, if we're quick and a decent shot. Glance down at the gun, turn the cylinders so the bullet will fire when we pull the trigger, then aim for Esteban's head and turn at the last second to shoot Pablo instead. To be honest, surviving this entire scenario would probably have been possible by breaking one of the windows at the very beginning, orienting yourself to identify the closest side of the building and working toward that side and out. There's even a ledge, which would definitely get us killed, but is probably better than having to admit that we have gonorrhea. The henchmen make it more difficult, but once we know that they're there, we can lure them into a position where we can crack them over the head and take their weapons. Remember, there's no real incentive to follow this killer's path through the house, and remaining in a room we've already explored makes disarming the guards possible. If we make it to the hedge maze, surveying the whole thing from an elevated position and then cutting through is the fastest way out, but with Pablo hidden in plain sight, our best shot would likely be while playing Russian roulette. None of us are safe while he lives. Surviving this entirely depends on when and how we act when an opportunity presents itself, and ultimately, Pablo never intended intended to let anyone leave alive. For those reasons, I give beating death's roulette 50-50 chance. 